In this lecture, I'm just going to give a couple of basic notes on how to organize a data analysis. Of course, there's no universal way uh, to do this that would apply to every single data analysis performed by anybody uh, in the world, but I think there's some useful tips um, that can be used to help you kind of put things together, to put things in logical places, uh, and, to, and ultimately you want to ensure that your data analysis re is reproducible, either by yourself or by someone else. So if we were to kind of boil down what are the kind of the key data analysis files that you, you will probably retain and over the course of a major project, of course, there's going to be some data. Um, there's going to be raw data and there's going to be processed data. Uh, and you're probably going to want to save a lot of this in various places. Um, you'll probably generate some figures or, or, um, uh, or tables, for example, and they're going to be kind of exploratory figures that you just kind of uh, put together to look at the data to kind of produce this rough cut of uh, what the data analysis might look like. These exploratory figures are not going to be very polished. They're just going to kind of be just good enough to kind of get you a sense of what the data look like. Um, then there might be some final figures. Uh, these final figures are going to be useful for you to put in reports. They're going to, you're going to show them to other people. They're going to be well annotated, kind of nicely organized and put together. Um, of course, there's going to be some code. Um, there's, there might be some R code. Um, uh, in the form of both raw and unused scripts. Uh, so these are kind of things that you just kind of code up to see what's going on, maybe in the process of making exploratory figures. Um, there's going to be R code that you eventually don't use in the end, uh, so you'll have some scripts lying around. Um, there will be some final scripts that you use in the final analysis, um, and these will be a little bit, e hopefully, easier to read, maybe some commented and formatted better. Uh, and then you might be writing some R markdown files um, that kind of annotate um, a data analysis uh, using a kind of literate uh, statistical analysis style. And finally, there's going to be some text that you write, uh, e either in the form of readme files that explain what's going on in your project. Um, there might be a more formal report that you have to write, or even a paper that you plan on publishing. So all this text is going to kind of integrate everything that you've done in this data analysis with the data, the, the figures, the tables, and the R code. So the raw data will come in any number of different forms. Um, they might come, for example, as just records uh, or as pl or kind of formatted texts like you have here. And you're going to do something to this da raw data to kind of make it uh, usable from a, for an analysis type of program. So for example, in this particular type of data, you might do some text processing. You might try to parse the data if it's formatted in a special format. Um, and so that you can generate something that can be later used for modeling or other types of uh, analysis. Um, and so you want to store this raw data in your, in your analysis folder if you're working on a project. Um, and if the data were accessed from the web, um, you want to include things like the URL, where you got the data, uh, what the data set is, and kind of a brief description of what it's for, um, the date that you access the, the URL on, on the website, and you might want to put this in, in like a readme file just so when you look at it later or if someone else looks at it, they know kind of where this data came from um, and what it's for. Another thing that I like to do, um, if, if you're using Git uh, or, or equivalent version control system to, keep, to track um, things that are going on in your project, uh, you can add your data set, your raw data, if it's possible. If it's too big, uh, then it's not really feasible. But you can add your raw data to the repository. And in the log file, sorry, in the log message, uh, when you add it, you can talk about you know, where the, what the website was, uh, when you got it, um, and uh, what the URL, URL was, etc. And so that's sometimes a, a convenient place to put this kind of information. Uh, process data usually um, uh, is a little bit is cleaner than the raw data. It come it can come in a variety of forms. One possibility is is as a table. So here you can see there uh, this is a kind of uh, classic data table with rows and columns. Um, you should process the data should be named so you can easy to see you, you can name the file so it's easy to see kind of what script generated what data. And so the processing script is very important because it shows you how the raw data were mapped to the process data. And so in any readme file or any sort of documentation, it's, it's important to, to, to document you know, what files, what code files were used to uh, transform the raw data into the process data. And finally, the process data should be tidy so that you can use them uh, in subsequent uh, modeling or analysis types of functions. 
Exploratory figures are, are usually very simple figures. Uh, these are figures that you kind of make in the course of your analysis as you're kind of getting a look at the data. Typically, your data will be high dimensional um, and because you'll be collecting lots of variables on lots of subjects or, or observations. And so you're only going to be able to look at pieces of the data at a time. And so exploratory figures serve the role of kind of giving you a, a, a quick look at various kind of aspects of your data, various cuts. Um, and so they're not all necessarily going to be part of your final report or final paper. And you kind of, you kind of, you and you'll tend so you'll tend to make a bunch of these along the way. They don't need to be pretty, but they need to be usable enough so that you understand kind of what's going on in the figure and 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 how to reproduce it. Final figures will generally be much more polished. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be better organized and better, kind of more, much more readable. So here you can see is a figure that's a, it's a four panel plot. It's not a single panel. So I'm cramming in a lot more data into this type of four panel plot. Um, and, and the final figures usually make a very small subset of the set of exploratory figures that you might generate. So for example, a typical paper in a, in a journal or something like that might have four or maybe five figures in it um, because these figures take up a lot of space. You typically don't want to inundate people with a lot of figures because then the kind of ultimate message of what you're trying to communicate will, uh, will tend to get lost in, in this kind of pile of figures. Um, and so it's important to have these figures that are kind of labeled well and annotated so that people understand what's going on with the data. As you're doing a data analysis, you'll probably uh, burn through a lot of different R scripts, uh, code files uh, for various purposes. There'll be a lot of dead ends kind of um, that you'll go down and maybe they won't be that useful. So there'll be a lot of R scripts that kind of don't play into the final analysis. Um, and so um, these R scripts are going to be kind of less commented and maybe just kind of uh, code that kind of puts some stuff together. You may have multiple versions of these code files um, and, and typically will include analyses that are later discarded. Final scripts will be much more clearly commented. Um, they'll you have maybe bigger comment blocks for whole sections of code. Um, so there'll be lots of small comments kind of explaining what's going on. Uh, any processing details, uh, any code that's used to kind of process the raw data be important to include. Um, and, and basically these final scripts you want to clean up so they, um, for any analyses that would appear in a final write-up or paper. And so it's important to, uh, that when people see a final product like a paper or a report, um, that they understand, you know, what scripts went into this report, um, and 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 what uh, both processing and kind of analysis scripts might have gone into this, so they know that they can see the kind of the chain of events that occurred. Uh, it's important, of course, to keep a lot of the other stuff that um, did was not used in the final report, just in case someone may want to look at some of the some of the dead ends that you went down. Uh, but that can be placed in a separate part of the project directory. Our markdown files are, off, are also very useful. They may not be exactly required, uh, but they can be very useful to kind of summarize parts of analysis or an entire analysis itself. Um, our markdown files you can be used to generate reproducible reports because you can embed code and text um, into the same document, and then you process the document into something readable like a web page or a PDF file. Um, these are very easy to create in our studio, and they can be useful as a kind of intermediate step, either perhaps you know be kind of something in between, just kind of code scripts, uh, code files, and data, and and a polished final report. Readme files are really useful because they kind of explain what's going on inside your project directory. Um, if you use R Markdown, you may not need them because um, the, the Markdown file will typically document what's going on in a given file. Uh, that's the idea behind literate programming or literate statistical analysis is that you don't separate the documentation and the code and the data in separate little pieces. Rather, you try to integrate them all in a single file. However, if you don't use R Markdown files, you may want to have Readme files that explain what's going on. Uh, so you can see kind of so that, that you or another person can see, can get a sense of the organization of the project. Um, they could contain you know step by step instructions for how the analysis is conducted, what code files are called first, what are used to process the data, what are used to fit models, and what are used to kind of generate figures, things like that. Uh, so uh, README files are really useful um, for explaining kind of what's going on. Finally, in the end, you'll probably produce some document or a report, maybe a paper or a summary of all the analysis that you did. And kind of, the, and the point of this is to tell the final story of what you generated here. And typically, you'll have a title, an introduction that kind of motivates your problem, uh, the methods that you used, uh, the, the results and any measures of uncertainty, and then any conclusions that you might draw from the data analysis that you did, including any pitfalls or potential problems. 
Um, the important thing is that you need to tell a coherent story. Uh, and so you need to do all, take all the analysis that you did and kind of winnow it down into a final product that has a, a coherent a story to it. Um, you definitely should not include every analysis that you performed through the whole process. So there may, may be many analyses that you did, um, but you want to be able to kind of narrow it down to the important parts. Um, it does not mean that you need to delete everything that you ever did, um, but the summary report should not include everything. Uh, and you should always include some references for the statistical methods that you use, so that way people know kind of what you used, what, maybe what software you used, what implementation was used. And so this is very important for, again, for reproducibility by others. So that's a quick overview of how to or, uh, kind of organize your data analysis. Um, <clears throat> just some basic tips because every data analysis will have its specific details. Um, uh, just a couple of pointers here to things that you may be interested in. First is a, a kind of a case, uh, a set of links on a kind of case study of a non-reproducible study uh, um, involving uh, cancer, uh, cancer data and analysis. Um, and so we have a link to that. Um, there's an editorial in the journal Biostatistics about the reproducible research policy, so you can take a look at that. Um, and a couple of links to managing statistical analyses um, and from some kind of products, guidelines, and best practices from other people. And then, of course, there's a, there's a software package called Project Template, which is a, actually an R package um, that can be used to automate a lot of the kind of mundane aspects of a data analysis project. So I encourage you to take a look at that, too.